let's say it is more present than is the threat we see from uh, Russia. But it is not tangible, and that's the difficult part of terrorism. Because we don't know where the next radicalized terrorist is, where that individual is at, or what that individual is willing to do. All you have to do is read the newspapers, and not a day goes by without another incident that has been attributed to a radicalized terrorist. But if you go back to, I think the nuance of your question was, so do we know when and where and how Russia will interfere or interact or threaten through this form of hybrid warfare or cyber warfare or whatever you may want to call it. This might be a worst case, but it might be something worthwhile thinking about. That in many respects, whether it happens to be Russia or China or North Korea, you could take a look at what's going on in cyberspace today and propaganda, which is a subject you brought up, as being something that these countries are interested in probing for the purpose of finding and setting the battle space for future conflict. And in some cases, people will say that battle space is already opened. And what they are doing is a precursor to a higher level battle. I'm not saying it's a precursor to open warfare, as we could relate to in a World War II forces on forces. But the definition of warfare has changed. So some would say that the battlefield is already open and that what is occurring today in this space is actually preparing the battlefield for higher levels of conflict. Is it preparing or is it happening? Well, that is up to the eyes of the beholder. And we don't know, do we?